Hey everyone, my name is Root and we are here and this is going to be the final week of the UPBA Season 4 and we are up against D-Ray and his San Diego Snugglers. Now this is going to be a really, really fun one because we are both 4-4 four and four, and it looks like whoever wins this one is going to be win and in. There's a chance for the person who loses, but obviously we're both going to be playing hard for a win here. Now you can just see in team preview, there are a couple of things that are unexpected here. We do see the Rotom Heat, which is a little bit unexpected only because Terrible is able to earth power through any kind of level hate there so we do have coverage for it potentially but more surprising to me is no gels and and that's going to be kind of huge for me because sure there are other minor things like i really did expect the latios to come instead of the rotom heat but it was much more surprising for me and much more pertinent to my game plan to not see the dang gels in. <sighs> because i'll be honest so much of my game plan in general was predicated upon the Jellicent being here instead of the Quillfish. And because I do see the Quillfish, it's going to make everything in this game so, so much harder. And honestly, like a lot of my team has sub toxic just to not get caught flat footed by the Jellicent. And I know he really, really likes the Jellicent. So again, just so much of my game plan is predicated around the gels and being here, and it really puts me at a disadvantage in team preview. And it honestly helped a ton against things like the Latios as well, because really if I just let that thing do whatever it wants to, then I'm going to be in a really awkward position, but that helps me out a ton there. Other than that, I'm just going to try to manage a Tornadus with a combination of getting a sub up early with Kirim potentially, or dealing with it with Scarf Togekiss, getting a bunch of damage off. But truthfully, I honestly really don't have an answer for the Urshifu as well because honestly the best thing that i could come up with is going to be this expert belt mill tank now funny enough expert belt max attack mill tank is able to ko this thing right off rip and it's faster than it so as long as it isn't scarfed then we can make some things happen here i do believe it is razor claw and aquarius that gave me that suggestion so thanks to them but other than that the versions here the version is kind of meant to be faster than the extra outside of sand and it can kind of deal with it defensively a little bit. And again, even with the Gigalit there, I did expect it to come, but a lot of my plan is gonna be predicated around subbing up on it and potentially being able to stall out the sand turns and hopefully be, be in a position to, to deal with it. But this is honestly one of the most confident I have been in team building going into games. Now, I did lead off with the Seismitoad here. I did think it kind of helps me not lose the most things off a of rip, right? Because I do think a good lead here, if he gets some good momentum off lead, then that could be really really bad for me because there are certain mods that i just don't know how to deal with that well and if he gets a ton of those kind of strung together in a row that could be over really really quickly but uh i do think about this turn a lot as he leads off with the tornadoes i do obviously have to scout for the grass knots uh potentially i but i do think about it a ton here i guess um, ultimately, I think I decide on, yeah, going into the Togekiss here, it does make the most sense, especially since, um, I can play for flinches, I can kind of maneuver myself a little bit here, but, and it's my most specially defensive mod, I'm pretty sure, but goes off a nasty plot turn one, which is absolutely terrifying, I, I guess I should have stayed in, but again, I really did not expect something like this off rip turn one, so, I'm just going to try to get off my humble air slash, try to make some things happen here. And uh, I honestly don't really have a ton for this. And I think he knows how much, how little I have for this as well, which is why he's going so aggressive off rip. Do, we do miss out on two KO. Does land the hurricane without a flinch, mind you. We do take one, which uh, was not planned for. I did not specifically EV for that. But again, uh, just naturally super bulky on the toad kiss. And it's a really not ideal situation to be in, obviously. But, um, but again, I mean, we're just going to call hacks on turn two because no flinch into a landing a hurricane. I mean, that's that's just kind of crazy. So we're here in a not great position, but where there's a flinch, there's a way. So we're going to try to persevere anyway. But does withdraw gets a uh, regenerator back, which is honestly terrifying because I'm going to have to probably deal with another nasty plot later on in this game. But does go out into the Rotom. It's probably going to take this fine. I probably should have calced out just how um, defensive this thing is. But it's a clean 15%. I feel pretty confident no matter what happens as to what that's going to look like for the look of this game, right? But also, he should know that I'm Scarfed, which means... He should probably be trying to get off rocks because that's going to make it difficult for me later and he's going to watch out for that. I don't have the best removal on this team. I don't even recall if I have removal on this team, but uh, I make the aggressive play into the Seismitoad and he called it out perfectly, goes for the Toxic. 
Um, I'm not the most worried because I do think that this can do what it needs to do, the seismic can by by standing up to the Ecto Drill. But uh, obviously getting it weakened too too much is not going to be great, but I don't really expect the seismic to be staying in for a ton of turns um, over time regardless, right? Goes into the Quillfish, uh, which is not great for me. Oh, also, also, one other thing that I should mention. Uh, I believe this Seismic 2 doesn't even have doesn't even have Earth Power on it because that's how much I expected the Quillfish not to come. I really thought D-Ray just loves to bring Jellison and he relies on Jellison quite a bit. He knows how to play Jellison. I think he just thinks of it as a comfort mon. And to see the Quillfish here just really threw off so much of what I wanted to do here. He goes, he goes into this thing pretty aggressively. Obviously, I was never in a position to click Earth Power even if I did have it. Um, so it's a strong play on his part. Goes for the spikes. And uh, now I'm really starting to feel not great about this situation. We do trade hazards, but again, uh, I think he gets the better end of this, potentially. Uh, and we'll have to see. The the Torn has not revealed an item. I, it could easily be boots, so I think... Overall, it does look like he gets the better end of this. Two of his mon or the extra re resist rocks anyway. It's probably not going to be the biggest deal in the world. I'm just feeling not the best about this situation overall, right? And uh, so many, so many of my Pokemon are, are, are grounded. If he gets a, a toxic spikes, it's obviously going to set me back in terms of me trying to maneuver in my my um, my pinchy boy. That's a Drapion, that's what it's actually called. It's not actually called Pinchy Boy. Um, but this thing is going to put me in an okay position. This thing is very, very physically defensive. Um, it's actually negative, n negative uh, special defense nature. I believe that's naive nature, if I'm not mistaken. I, I'm, I'll, I'll double check that. Just um, as I'm talking, it is naive nature, yeah. Because I wanted it to outspeed as much as possible. And um, he really didn't have many specially defensive threats, and whatever sp his main special defensive threat is, is Rotom, th this th this thing, right? And I can sub up on this, I can kind of manage this thing okay, right? Uh, whatever, I, I expected him to, to want to switch out, but regardless, I thought I felt like subbing was going to be the best play I had available to me. And it's going to allow me to get off a pretty strong earth power. And I was pretty confident that even if this thing is really specially defensive, I, I'd be able to take this out because of the chip damage from earlier, but it's not enough even with the chip damage, which honestly surprised me. I, I did have uh, I did have a little a little bit of special uh, attack investment just in order to be able to um, KO just a physically defensive one, but uh, it just didn't, which sucks, right? It, it didn't feel great in the moment. Um, I'd be surprised if I didn't sub again. Yeah, I just sub again. Obviously, this allows in the the Gigalith in a way that I don't appreciate. And I think, actually, if I remember right, um, I can actually take... My sub can actually take two Rock Blast hits. I can take one Rock Blast hit and, and get a KO on, on the second one. So, as long as I can mitigate the the rock blast hits i can actually um stay in against a gigalith however 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 uh it also is the case that uh he got the slightest bit of shape damage with a volt switch which i think un unironically makes a difference here in terms of how many rock blast hits i can take regardless we're here now and i kind of have to stand in front of this uh, gigalith in a way that i don't appreciate but behind a sub this is reasonably free damage I can get off here, and as much as I don't like it, I'm, this this Gigalith is something that I'm gonna have to get through at some point. I'm just, I, I think it, it, in this moment I'm just calking out if it's better for me to go for the super effective uh, special hit, or just go for the for the for the icicle spear. I actually don't even think it was that big of a difference. I think it honestly mattered how it was EV trained, but obviously I, I don't know yet, so we'll see. Um, but but yeah, because of because of the chip, I'm pretty sure that allows him to KO the on the first rock blast hit. And yeah, you can just see from from these rolls, it does look like it is a roll, and I probably would have taken 
two rock blast hits but now i'm so weak in that uh i'm in a not great position i don't even think i come in on spikes anymore so i'm just kind of forced to to stay in and hit this gigalith but unfortunately this is kind of this is kind of how this had to go down because um because go going through this gigalith is something that i really couldn't afford to put in a ton of resources into doing and Unfortunately, giving up my Karen was probably going to be the best way to do it in every scenario. I, I think, I think of anything. I'm, I'm kind of thinking through. Um, I can't make a sub, but, but I think I must have been thinking through. Uh, if it's if it's worth risking, like to take any, to take any, the number of sub hits that that I, that I have to be able to take. But I think I'm thinking through also just whether, again, it's stronger to go for the Icicle Spear or the Growth Power. And I'm trying to see based off of that, um, the damage from the first hit. But either way, it's, it, the difference is negligible. Like, I think once I did find it, find it out on the Calyx, it was a difference between, like, 10%, which I really didn't expect to be the biggest, um, deal in the world at the end of the day, right? So we're here. It does go for a rock, so it does give me another turn of damage, which is going to make that special defense drop super duper relevant now, because uh, I am able to take it out now if it stays in. However, he might know that and aggressively go out into the tornadoes, so I think I'd switch up my play here. Uh, I don't entirely remember if what he goes into in this moment, but uh, oh yeah, no, he, he has the free sack in in the Rotom, which he takes gladly. Um, that's always a, a much stronger play. Um, he did give me some credit in that he didn't just just go to the to go to the tornadoes right away, thinking that I would Earth Power again for the KO. So so he did give me some credit in trying to predict my prediction and at least going to the sack and not tr and trying not trying to preserve the sack for the end game, regardless, or preserving like a six hour or whatever the case may be. In any case, uh. Now he can go out into the extra draw. We did burn through quite a bit, quite a few turns of sand, but uh, I'm never going to be in a position where I'm going to be able to get this thing back in here. So I just have to go down, which is ultimately fine. <laughs> did I just click up? I don't know why I clicked up. Uh, I think that was a misclick. Regardless, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be KO'd, and uh, it's going to be fine. But like I said, we did get through a ton of turns of sand, and we are in a in an okay position to do. What we need to do, we can go out into this thing because this this is going to be um, the mon that's most able to, to stand in front of this. I believe I built this thing so it's able to take two iron heads pretty comfortably. However, with all with all the hazard snack and uh, the sandstorm, it's not going to be as easy to do anymore. So. Uh, it's still it's still the most physically defensive mon that I have, and it's kind of the mon that I built to kind of stand in front of this thing. But uh, I've been Iron Head flinch away now because of all the hazard stack uh, in a way that I don't like. It's definitely uncomfortable for me. But you know, again, that dang quillfish. I I I can't overstate how surprised I was to see that thing in team preview. I thought he had better options. I thought I thought Jelson was a comfort pick for him, and uh, I just didn't see it coming overall. But again, so much of my team kind of relied on him not having it. Uh, I believe here. I don't recall what I do. Yeah, I actually go for this sub. I, I guess I was super duper confident that that he wouldn't want to stay in there, which is uh, crazy to me, right? But I think in my head, I figured he wouldn't have enough slots because I, I I think I've seen him play the extra and he doesn't generally have a ton of move slots for for coverage I know uh, I could have air laced me I think but generally speaking you know once you once you account for like edge quake sword dance rapid spin um when you kind of put together the standard move set the more standard move set um you kind of run out of slots pretty quickly so I think I guess that's what I was banking on. Um, it's a little bit of a bold play on my part, but you know, we, we make it through eventually, right? Either way, we're one step closer to at least getting a toxic off on this thing, putting me in a slightly better position to kind of deal with a bunch of um, what he's doing here. 
but I think he, I mean, I guess he must have smelled my, my stuff toxic. You can see, um, we don't get intimidated, which is dope, but I think he must have smelled out my, my sub toxic here. He didn't even, I guess he must not have even thought that I would go for a stone edge or something on that turn. Um, which is interesting, right? Um, either way, either way, <sighs> like I said, if it was a Jellicent, I'd be in a stronger position. I, I, I really only brought this thing because I thought the Jellicent was going to come. You can see I don't even have a move to hit this thing. The close combat's my strongest move for it, and I guess I go for it here, but... I don't know. Maybe I even take a liquidation behind behind a sub after close combat. I don't even know. Uh, like I said, I am pretty defensive. I am pretty defensive. Oh, it goes for Poison Jab. That's fair. Again, Poison Jab is, is, is one of those moves where I wasn't entirely sure if he would want to have it on, especially um, with some other type of... I, I've, I've seen, I'm, like, I've seen him run Destiny Bond a bunch of times, so that was, a, that was a definite possibility. But regardless, we're here. We can get a little bit healthier. I think we can still just barely um, take on certain things. Maybe if we, if we maneuver this version well enough... But truthfully, we're not in a good position. We are not in a good position. We are not in a good position. I do go out into the Drapion, which uh, will hopefully be better for me, right? I did take a good amount of dang uh, hazard damage. Goes for a poison jab here. We see how little that does. I'm very, very physically defensive. I think I actually healed more on that turn than uh, he was able to do. However, this will allow me to at least attempt a sub, and I might have I might have run the calyx to see if I take a liquidation, but it's going to be dubious. And regardless, I I don't hit this thing super duper hard, regardless of what happens, right? So it's going to have to be something that I try to just figure out, right? And again, so like half my team has sub toxic just because of this dang Jellison, and and just to not have to deal with kind of the strength sap. Um, to kind of hide behind um, having to hit, uh, her having to take all those strong hurricanes. It goes for poison jab, or it goes for a destiny bond. Sorry. Um, presumably because he thought I was going to EQ, but man, that's a lot of damage to do. I don't think I would have KO'd with even with the EQ, right? Um, but it's okay. Does withdraw. Goes out into this thing. Which is completely fair. Uh, but this is exactly kind of what this is designed to do. I go for the crunch. I, I, I didn't want to have mono knockoff. I think I needed... I, mean, I think I needed knockoff and... Uh, did I bring a fighting? I think I brought brick break and knock and uh, uh, crunch. Because I didn't want to be locked into into brick break. I guess brick break is for the, uh, it's for the gigalith, I guess. I don't 100% remember. However, we get a defense drop, which is huge because it forces a switch uh, in back into this thing. I don't get intimidated, which is very dope. But more importantly, I'm getting healthier and I'm getting da I'm getting damage on the team. Obviously, it's fraught with the tornadoes because of the regenerator, but but rocks are going to keep it in bay, and rocks plus any kind of crunch chip is going to quote unquote weaken it over time, right? Either way. Um, we're able to get some free damage off on this on this quill fish, and hopefully we can get healthy enough where we can still kind of preserve this thing for the later game. Because however this end game is going to pan out, it does seem like the drape down is going to be crucial to it, which is insane to me. Because uh, of all things, I didn't bring drape down a bunch. I didn't really um, think I had a ton for with the, to do with the drape down, but uh, it really is the only thing that's keeping me in this game right now because I'm so ill prepared for this quill fish. But, uh, it's looking like this thing doesn't even have a water stab, which is, uh, insane to me, right? O obviously, it's fine. Like, it's understandable. Um, water stab probably didn't seem like the most important against my team, which is totally, totally fair. But, um, but again, it just gave me such an opening in this game where I really didn't feel like I had any business, that I had any business being in. Probably brought destiny bond over the water stab but but i think um i'm not even sure if we saw a fourth move right we've seen destiny bond toxic 
or sorry, De Destiny Bond, uh, Poison Jab, and Spikes, and I'm not even entirely sure if we saw a fourth move, but goes back into this thing. I can crunch here, try to just weaken this thing, and then maybe, I don't know, ultimately, I think I kind of lose to, to this, to this tornado, no matter what happens, right? However, 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 we get the crunch off, and we crit. <laughs> Uh, which is kind of funny, but also, I mean, not great for D-Ray. But it's not the worst thing in the world, right? We can, we can kind of manage here. We, uh, we're still not in a position to really do much against the rest of D-Ray's team. And it's definitely not great. But... Uh, I don't entirely remember how this turn plays out. I think I might have... This might have been the turn to Saktokis. Yeah, it's a turn to Saktokis. And... Oh... Uh, we can at least... Kind of... Waste some turns here. I think... I think my plan here was to sack this thing and go into Verzian and try to... Outlast this thing and... And, um... Put this thing in a position where we can waste some turns and we can make some things happen, right? Because ultimately, now we're in an end game where it looks like maybe Miltank can do something, right? Because if this version, if, if this Gigalith goes down, then Miltank can can EQ the the Exeter outside of Sand, and it can up uh, play rough the um. And it can play rough the other thing, right? So, so we can sub. We, we resist both stabs, but the explosion comes out, which is which is mind blowing to me in the moment. But no pun intended. But literally, this was the move that he needed in order to kind of not uh, get worn down or, or not have to waste all the, all the sand turns. He had he packed the exact move that he needed in this scenario. And look. I've I've built with a Gigalith plenty, right? And 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 once you bring Edgequake, Stealth Rock, maybe Toxic, maybe Body Press, maybe some coverage, some uh, exotic coverage move. I don't think I've brought. Uh, no, I no, that's a lie. I think I brought Explosion once in the entire time that I've used Gigalith, and I've used Gigalith a fair amount, right? I've I won a championship with, with, with Gigalith, and um, this was. An unexpected moment for me, because again, I, I I felt confident going into this sequence. I actually clicked clicked Verzian. I went into Verzian feeling confident about what could, what it can do in the moment. I thought it can close out, help me close out this game, uh, so I can actually say that I did something with a Verzian. But uh, now we're in a moment where uh, that's not the case, and I'm mildly panicking. You can, you can see that I checked turns, I believe, right there. But I don't think there's any world in which I uh, make it out of this interaction alive. Uh, I believe here... Yeah, I believe here I just go out into this thing because um, this is what is designed to... This is max physical defense. Like, literally 252, 252. It's meant to just take a hit, try to do something back, and, again, make something happen for me. Uh, I believe, and yeah, it's, it, it's funny just to, just to look back on it and see, I didn't even have a dang ground move for, for the quill fish. I just didn't respect that thing at all, but we stay over half, which is big. I honestly kind of, I, I think what I was thinking through in, in the, in the team view was... If this seismitoad, if we, by bringing in the seismitoad, it invites in him bringing in Urshifu uh, uh, aggressively, and then trying to wicked blow, KO me with with all the chip, and then uh, and then extra can come back in and try to do something there. I don't know. Regardless, I click scald and I crit. It. it uh, I don't know, man. But uh, but yeah, we we get another crit, which was huge. I had no business ever getting that KO. Also, um, going into Seismitoad was a little bit sillier than I thought because it let him Swords Dance in my face. 
I, although that said, I don't think I had any other option because Miltink, while it could get an extra belt earth, earthquake off, it was, I think it, it was always going to be a 2 KO. I don't think it, it could ever just straight up Oko. So that wasn't great, but, uh, goes for a wicked blow, which, uh, does not pick up a KO. But now I'm in a position where it, I believe, as long as I, as long as I can land a play rough, then I win the game. Because I think even with all of the chip and all of the um, hazards going on here, I'm pretty sure that I take one wicked blow all the time, or like a sucker punch, or, or whatever. If, if this thing is scarfed, assuming this thing is scarfed, right? In fact, I also potentially could have tested it by going in, out into Drapion as well. But regardless, I think I just try to close out this game by click by landing one single play rough. It's all I need right now. Yeah, I think the only way to really get KO'd here was to get close combated. Oh, actually, no. With all this ship, I actually do think I go down to a Scar Cricket blow. So, I, so that was another thing that I guess I had to think about as well. However, hopefully with these rounds of Sand Ship, I would have picked up a KO with Drapion, maybe? Question mark? I think... I think if it really was scarfed into Wicked Blow, then uh, I would be able to to revenge with Drapion, maybe. But I think you can tell just by the way that I was speaking about it. Um, I can just click Play Rough, we land a Play Rough, and we're able to KO. Obviously, this win came by two crits that mattered a whole ton, but I'll be honest. When I look back on my season, I don't feel particularly bad. And I don't even mean that in, in the way to say, like, oh, I got hacked out a number of times, so I shouldn't feel bad about this bit of hacks. I more so mean that I had a really, really fun season, and I really do think I had a really super solid team, and I think this team deserves to be in playoffs and that's not to say in the slightest that d-ray doesn't deserve it but what i am saying is when i do look back on my season it is very very difficult to feel bad about this being how i get in there right if you're just looking at my four losses right one loss was week one where in honesty i probably could have built that better i probably didn't have the best grasp on the team in general there was week four against just lucas where honestly if i land a stone edge i think i win Every time there was week seven against Lux, where I lost to a bad sleep talk roll into a crit. I think in every other scenario, I win that game, but that was what it was. And then there was the last week, week eight against Cherry. And honestly, I like I said, I had to drag myself out of bed to play that game. I don't like the way that I played that one a hundred percent, but I do think that I had a strong build. I think I had all the tools to win. It just came, it just came to a matter of executing where I had to, and ultimately, I, I didn't, but. I could have and honestly again if i landed that thunder then the game would have been super different so it was a fun way to kind of recap the season but also but also like i said this game as a way of kind of capping the season i honestly can't even say that i feel bad about how this is i ultimately end up in playoffs because like i said i think this season is nothing to not be proud of i had a ton of fun and i'm sure we'll give them hell in playoffs so thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back really really soon with more weeks of the upba playoffs as well as other things to come in the future but with that thank you guys so much for watching and everyone once again out